Steve Kaufman here. Um, today, you know, I'm going to, first of all, I want to say that I did um, a, a webcam interview with Luca, the wonderful Italian polyglot, and uh, we are going to put it up here at my YouTube channel, but I'm waiting until I'm away because while I'm away, I can't do any videos. I'm going to be in Australia, New Zealand. And so uh, Alex is going to put up some pictures and uh, I think we went, Luke and I went at it for about 40 minutes or so. So it's going to be 10, or at least uh, four uh, sessions. So that's when you'll be seeing those interviews that I did with, with Luca, just so that there's not a blank for a whole month. Um, you know, I want to talk about today, on uh, the subject of language learning, uh, something that's kind of been running around in my mind. And this is what I would call the fundamental... This, I, I come up with all these things that are the key to language learning. and I may have ha used this before. I don't know. But it suddenly dawned on me that, you know, the most important thing is, is it fun? Do you enjoy doing it? You know? Uh, and, and I mentioned this, you know, in my seven secrets to language learning. I think the first one was spend the time. And the second was to do things that, that you enjoy doing. But the subject came up because uh, at a forum at Link, someone mentioned the gold list, which is a, a form of, of sort of handwritten spaced repetition devised by David James, who's a wonderful polyglot uh, Englishman who lives in Poland and speaks, I don't know, however many languages and speaks at least five of them very, very fluently, including Russian and German, I believe, and, and I'm not sure which others. And he has a, a, a variety of persona at YouTube, one of which is Victor Huliganov. So you can easily find him. And uh, he has a lot of useful uh, information on language learning, and I've watched some of his stuff, and I agree with a lot of what he says. And he has devised this system, which he calls the Gold List. And the goal list consists essentially of the following, and that is to, to uh, maintain lists of words and phrases, to write them out longhand uh, in writing, therefore, to write the target language uh, down one side and the translated meaning on the other side, and typically have a list of 25 or 30 of such words. And I might get this wrong. You're best to go off and see one of his videos or Google for gold list. But uh, the idea is that you write these out and then forget about them for 14 days. That the mere ha fact of writing them down is good for you and then puts them somewhere in your brain. Uh, if you look at them 14 days later, you will probably remember about a third of them. So then you take the remaining two thirds and uh, create another list with these. Uh, and then you look at it 14 days later. And so what's interesting in all of this is A, that you're writing, which is, I think, a good thing to do. B, that you're not deliberately trying to learn it, cram it. And this is one of the points where I very much agree with David James, and that is that a lot of our deliberate learning activity, forcing ourselves to learn a declension table or a grammar rule or even answering questions or any of this stuff that's hard work, uh, it basically just puts things into our short-term memory. And that's, that's what they do in in French classes here in Canada, and that's why kids graduate and can't speak French. Even though they pass their French every year, some of them did quite well in French, but they were cramming stuff into their short-term memory, and now, uh, 10 or 20 years after graduating, they don't remember a thing, or very little. Uh, so his thing is just write them down, look at them two weeks later. So I decided that I would try to do this. Uh, I would try, I said I would do this for my reading that I do away from link, away from the computer in Czech, and also with some of the words uh, that I can just, you know, take a random vocabulary list from our vocab section or take a tagged list of connector words in Czech or, or you know, date of case or whatever I want to do and start writing them out. So I've started doing this. And so then there was much discussion at our forum at Link about what's effective in language learning and what's not effective. And some people thought that the gold list was a good idea and some people thought it wasn't a good idea. And some people said, yeah, I've been doing it and, you know, basically it works. And that kind of, basically something clicked in my brain and I, I realized that most things work. Uh, Anki works. 
you know, Super Memo works. You know, these flash guard SRS systems work. Uh, probably Benny's, uh, you know, go out and walk around and talk to people works, at least for him or some of the time. I don't know. So everything can work if you enjoy doing it. But there's no point in telling someone who doesn't like to do flashcards that he should do flashcards because it works. Because any evaluation of how well things work is, is necessarily subjective. We think it works because we do it and we're improving, so it must work. Does it work better than something else? Well, somebody else is doing something else. So you know, how do you evaluate? The, the big thing is, do you want to spend your time? Because in language, unless you've got unlimited time to spend on language learning, most of us have a limited amount of time. Unless you're a full-time language learner, as I was with Chinese back 40 odd years ago, most of the time you've got an hour or so a day to spend. So where do you want to spend your time? And that to me becomes the most important criterion. So now I've been going at this gold list thing and I quickly discovered that I was not at all interested in creating a list of words that I didn't know the meaning of in my reading away from the computer because it distracted me from reading. I didn't want to do it. Even if there's 15 words on the page that I don't understand, I'd rather just read through and have an imperfect understanding of what I'm reading rather than each time being distracted from my reading and have to write this down and either then or subsequently looking the word up in a dictionary. And that's just, I don't want to do it. So if I don't want to do it, by definition, my new definition, it's not effective because I don't want to do it. So how long will I keep doing something that I don't want to do? And even if you're in school and the teacher's going to force you to do something, I don't think things that you are forced to do are going to be that effective. I notice, for example, you know, another subject comes up is how often should you listen to content? I find it boring to listen to the same thing over and over again. Is it effective to listen over and over again? Or should you be constantly going out, going on to new stuff? Again, it depends on what you like to do. If it's interesting content, and if it's a nice voice, such as this Czech material that I found here, uh, history, I can listen over and over again. Whereas the news from Radio Prague, I can only listen to it once because it's read in a very deadpan voice by the newscaster. I, I cannot listen to it more than once. So, but both are effective, you know, getting a new article from Radio Prague on what's happening in Czech Republic, politically, whatever, it's adding to my vocabulary by the same token, listening more than once to this other material, which is really making me, you know, familiar with the language, that's effective too. So again, it's whatever you find uh, 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 fun. That's, it's kind of easy. And so when you look at all the research that's done by, uh, you know, second language acquisition experts and they study the effect of studying word lists or doing this or doing that, it really doesn't matter. The only thing is, if, if you're a teacher, how, what can you find that the, that the student actually likes to do? Some people, I, I must say some of the time, I like flipping through my, my flashcards. Uh, but I, own, I now do them the easiest way possible. In other words, I put on the flashcard the term, it's the new word, the translation into English, and the captured phrase, phrase from Link. And I just go through them. Bing, 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 bing. I don't want to rack my brain to try and think what the meaning is. I would rather just expose myself to the flashcards. It's a break from reading. It's something I can do while I'm waiting somewhere. I just open up my... Uh, you know, my iPhone or whatever, and I, and I just go through the flashcards. And I don't look to the other side because I've, I've got everything on the one side. And all I do is change the status of them. So if I move it to status four, it won't come back. And if it's a status two or three, that determines how frequently it comes at, back into my deck. But I just go through them as quickly as I can. So, you know, uh, again, people say writing something out longhand is good for you. And that's one of the things that, that David uh, James says. And I'm sure that's true. And I'm I'm going to continue with this, uh, this gold list, at least for a while. Uh, I have created, I created four lists yesterday and four lists today, but I time myself. And each list, you know, if I write 25 words down, it takes me eight minutes to do that for one list. So, you know, if I do four lists, because that's only 25 words. So if I wanted to get up to 100 words a day, that's four times eight, that's 32, that's a half hour. That's a half hour now. Um, I don't know, do I want to spend maybe one third of all my available learning time on making these lists? 
that I'll look at in 14 days and then I'll have to make another list with two-thirds of them plus the new words that I'm adding pretty soon it won't be um, 30 minutes a day it'll be more than that so it's probably effective but is that where I choose to spend my time I suspect that I would the minute I leave those lists and I go back to reading about uh, you know what's happening in the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the 1850s and reading about it in Czech and learning all those new words and then listening to it uh, in my car the same thing that I read and I'm acquiring vocabulary from I just find that more enjoyable and so I think they can both be effective and ultimately what matters is which do you find more enjoyable one other thing that David James said which I thought was very interesting uh, but I, I didn't have time to f hear the whole video but he talks he has this video where he talks with uh, a girl from Manitoba actually who asks him five or seven questions about his system and one of the questions is how do you get from passive vocabulary to active vocabulary and his first question is well why do you want to activate your vocabulary I mean I think that's a very important question if you are happy listening and reading and enjoying the language as I'm doing then yeah, activate. One day I will, but there's no panic. Uh, I have started speaking with my tutors in Czech. I have uh, probably had 15 or 20 sessions with them, and I enjoy it, and it's good, but there's no panic. There's no pressure. And he says that, you know, if you have enough of a passive vocabulary, when you are put in a situation where you need to activate that vocabulary, it will activate within three days. I don't know what basis he has for saying that. Uh, I expect to go to Prague in October. We'll see if all my passive vocabulary activates in three days. But I think the big point is when you need to use the language, when you need to speak more, if you have a large passive vocabulary, you will be able to speak. It'll come quite quickly. But there again, it'll be something that you want to do. So if you want to speak early, speak. If you don't want to speak early, don't worry about it. If you have, I was speaking to a student in Japan, who is, has a job interview and she wants to improve her spoken English. Okay, now you have to really focus on improving your spoken English and there's things that, that you can do and you're motivated to do it now, so that's fine. But um, again, uh, I guess I just I suddenly realized that the, uh, I had made some notes. I wonder if I left anything out that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, there was just the thing that, that uh, David James speaks about short-term and long-term memory. I don't understand all these things about short-term and long-term memory, so I just think a lot of these things don't matter. I think that there's only one rule. I'm more and more convinced of this. Uh, do what you like doing. So, in my case, it's listening and reading to things of interest and occasionally taking a break from it to review words and phrases. And slowly, when I get the urge, occasionally here and there, speaking to people uh, in the language. Now, it is important to find content that you enjoy, where you enjoy the voice, where you enjoy the subject matter, uh, you enjoy the way words are used. Uh, and uh, I've been lucky because in Russian, lots of stuff available between literature and audiobooks and Echo uh, which now is under some threat, by the way, in Russia. It looks like Putin is, is uh, going to try to uh, shackle them to some extent. And this, this wonderful material that I found in, in, uh, on, in Czech. And I saw, so this is, again, something we have to do a better job of at Link is make people aware of not only all the good content that our, our members are creating in our library, but also, as they progress, uh, the kind of content that's available from the Internet. Now, we do list quite a few of these uh, resources, but I'm not sure everybody knows where to find them, and we were talking about that today, and maybe we have to do a better job there. But anyway... Just to leave you with a thought, if you can find a way to enjoy your language learning, whatever that way is, that's going to be the effective way for you. So that's my thought for today. And I kind of went on a bit too long, but there you have it. Look forward to your comments. Thank you for listening.